Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I have 22 days before the Toronto Bonsai Society Spring Show and Sale. So I have to pick out my trees and start getting them ready. I initially wasn't really considering putting my mixed bog forest in the show, but now I'm reconsidering it because it's fairly unique looking and it's looking nice and green and lush and I think, you know, even though it'll keep getting better and better over the years, I, uh, I think it's kind of unique and I think people will like this forest, seeing it in real life. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool looking. So that is one I'm considering for the show. Another one is my bird's nest spruce over here. I think it's looking quite nice now. Now, I don't know, you know, in three weeks, these new tufts of foliage will turn a dark color and maybe it won't look quite as nice, but uh, eh, still should look quite nice for the show, I think. I'm going to put my workbench with all my miniature bonsai in the show. So I have a lot of work getting that display already. Uh, so that'll be kind of fun putting that together. I want to build a base for the display and kind of have moss so it's sitting on the ground. It should look pretty good. I, I, I'm looking forward to doing the work on this. I'm also considering my Chinese village penjing with the tiger bark ficus trees, putting that in the show. Now it's in pretty rough shape right now. My plant room, I can't get at any of the trees in it. Um, so it needs a lot of weeding, a lot of cleaning up and getting the trees really healthy. I think they have scale insects on them. So I'm going to dig that out today, have a look at it, start the work on that. And if it looks really good by showtime, I'll put it in the show. If it doesn't, then I'll wait until maybe the fall show. Another possible tree is my cedar, root over rock cedar here. Um, the trees are looking pretty sparse right now, but if they fill in nicely before the show and they're looking good, that's a possibility, but it's probably a remote possibility, but we'll see. Outside here, I have a few possibilities. I have my large forest that I could get all cleaned up and looking good before the show. I have my avatar grove here with my eastern white cedars. That could be cleaned up and looking good for the show. I've already had this forest in the Toronto show, so I don't want to redisplay anything. I think that's about it as far as possible show trees. Other than, you know, I have lots of tropicals in there that I could get ready also. So that, that is a possibility. I could bring a ficus out, put it in the greenhouse, and get it ready for the show also. So, yeah, I'd like to fill the car up with trees because, you know, it's a long drive to Toronto. And I don't want to just bring a couple of trees for the show. I'd rather kind of fill the car up and get my money's worth out of driving there and driving back. So... Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll head inside now and I'll pull out the Chinese village penjing and maybe another tree, a tropical tree that I could get show ready. It was super hard work getting the village penjing out. It was way back in the corner of the plant room. It's full of weeds, insects. Some of the trees are just barely alive. It's in really rough shape, so it's gonna be hard to restore it in 24 days, but I'll give it a try. Here is a look at the planting, full of weeds. You can see the liverwort is just overgrown. There's this uh, stuff that looks like clover. Um, I always remember the name of this after. Sorrel, sorrel, I think. Uh, the trees are in poor shape. There's dead branches on them. Uh, yeah, there was insects all over them. There's scale on them. There's even one of them died back here, the one beside the house. Yeah, so I did the best in winter I could watering it, but it was hard to reach in that back corner and I couldn't get to it for insects or anything. So definitely next winter, I've got to get that plant room set up properly with all the, the shelves and everything. And so I can have easy access to every tree. That's my goal. So. I'm going to proceed. The first thing I'm going to do is spray everything down with the soap and water. I have it behind the planting here. And it's a mixture of 40 parts of water to one part liquid dish soap. And I'll spray everything down and then 
I'll bring it in the greenhouse and begin the work on the weeds and the scale and try and get it healthy. I think I can. Okay, here goes the soap and water. Just spray everything down. All right, here I go rinsing it off. Yeah, this was really hard to get out of the plant room. I had to move like 15 trees, bring them out to the greenhouse to get them out of the way. Finally, I could get back to the corner that this was in. It was in a bad place. Okay, well that's all rinsed thoroughly. It's nicely watered. I'll bring it in the greenhouse now and begin the work on it. For step number one, I'm going to weed the plant and get rid of all this liverwort and these weeds everywhere. That's where I'll start. All right, here I go. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I knew this planting, you know, wasn't in a good position. And it was doing really well over the winter until we got that warm spell and the plant room warmed up and all the insects came out. All the trees and weeds started growing. So up until then, it was looking much better. It's really gone downhill just recently and I knew I better get it out of there and get working on it because otherwise you could lose, you know, the trees in the planting. I already lost one. So I better, yeah, this is the time. Time to get working on it. Get this uh, planting restored back to something decent looking. And I'm going to try and make improvements on this planting for the show, uh, adding more detail, more features, just, you know, making it look better all the time. I think my ceramic bridge back there is a good step forward. I've got this 3D printed lantern here from Kale which is really nice, but I could probably find a stone one that would look even better that size. I'm going to look and try and find one. I know Kale said you can order them online, so I'll have a look there first. and Maybe I can order a stone lantern. Or I could even make one myself. That might even be a better solution. probably make one myself. The little bugs are just pill bugs. They're harmless. They just eat de decayed organic matter. They don't eat live roots or anything like that, so they're no problem. Well, I've got a lot of that liverwort out of that front corner. It looks much, much better. In here, uh, from the sorrel, they get these seed pods. And when the seed pods are in the right stage of life, you just touch them and they explode and hundreds of seeds shower out everywhere. So you have to be really careful if you see a seed pod like that. I grab it between my fingers like this and squeeze and pull it out. If it explodes, you'll get new, new weeds all over your planting. So I'm careful, pinch it between your fingers. And sometimes when it's between your fingers, they explode and you can feel the force between your fingers and it's quite powerful. So really be careful with these uh, sorrels. I think, I think that's what they're called. Uh, they're, they spread very, very quickly and they have nasty deep roots. And yeah, good, good idea to get rid of them from your plantings. What I'm planning for this, you can see how the houses are all this kind of gray color here. I want to get a green color in there, so sort of moss on the tiles. So I'm going to be painting the houses to improve the look of them, to make them look more realistic and more natural. 
so they blend in more with the surroundings so I don't have like the gray and then everything else is sort of green. I think that'll look much much better and I'm you know downloading as many pictures as I can of these Chinese village houses and getting ideas and yeah to keep improving this planting. I'm hoping people discover all kinds of details at the show you know what's the courtyard gardens the Chinese garden out front here I just hope there's you know all kinds of cool details in the planting so you can just really enjoy looking at it and studying all the details I think that'll be that's my goal and I'm hoping to get more ground cover plants planted in here so not just moss but maybe some miniature bushes and stuff of different plants you know get a bit more variety right now I got moss bushes moss hedges so if I can vary that I think it'll improve the planting also I think it can it'll look really really good a bit of variety here well this tree is dead so I'm going to pull the stump out and I'm not sure why it died I think it, it, maybe it was water it just wasn't getting water in there or I don't know. Maybe it got too many insects on it. I'm looking at the height of my main tree. I don't think it's too high. I think it's in proportion, but I do need to round the canopy. I got all this new growth coming up, so that's what I'll do now. So I'll just scissor prune it. Using directional pruning. So that main tree's looking a little better. Still a few branches I need to sort out. So I'm just looking at the branch here. I've got an old mature branch here and a new shoot here. I'll take the new shoot out. Same here, I've got a crossing shoot here, a new one. There's a dead branch here I can remove. So I've got number one tree all pruned up. I will have to go in and descale it, scrape the scale, spray it with soap and water. And I think it should burst to life with new growth because it's out here in the greenhouse and good sunshine, warmth, humidity, everything a ficus loves. So hopefully, you know, before the show, this tree is looking really, really lush and nice. I've only got 24 days, so that's not a lot of time, but hopefully it reacts quickly and looks good. I'll prune up all the remaining trees in the forest, getting them all pruned back, ready to grow again. Then we'll come back and do some work on the scale insects. I have got a box full of clippings. So I finished pruning the trees. Here's what it's looking like. So I think it's looking much better. The trees are looking more like a tree form and they're starting to actually get some nice character on them. They're starting to get some good movement. Looking a little more miniature. So my next step is to deal with the scale. If I zoom in on this branch, I hope you can see the blisters on here, right in here, there's blisters and they're all over the trees. So I need to scrape those off and then respray the whole planting with soap and water and then rinse it once again. So I'll do that next. I'll spend, I don't know how long, maybe an hour or so scraping off scale insects. So I just use my little curved scissors to scrape the scale insects. And I just scrape all the blisters and then I get my soap and water, keep it on hand and just give it a spray. I shouldn't kill any bugs that are crawling around on the branches. And if you notice more scale forming, you just keep spraying, keep scraping, and eventually they all go away. So this is really going to help these trees, getting the scale off them, getting them outside in the sunlight here in the greenhouse where it's warm and humid. And you know, if I don't get it looking good for this show, I'll try and get it ready for the fall show. 
Show trees are one of those things, you know, you, you try and prepare them for the show and sometimes the tree looks really good and other times you just didn't quite make it. You know, sometimes I defoliate the tree hoping the new leaves are coming in for the show and maybe you have bad weather that uh, before the show and the leaves don't come out on time, they're a bit like a week late and not looking their best so you just have to you know, be prepared that you get your tree ready for the show and sometimes they look good for the show sometimes they don't and you don't put them in the show you wait until they're looking better so I'm just rubbing all the leaves too making sure there's no scale insects on them cleaning any mold off the leaves that when the scale insects are feeding they secrete honeydew and then it drips on the leaves it's like a sugary substance and it attracts a bit of mold and mildew on the leaves and you just rub them off. Soap and water takes care of that. I have finished cleaning the scale off the trees. They're looking much better now. So hopefully they'll green up a bit, start growing again, filling out. So my next job, there's many jobs on this planting. I'm going to clear you can see the pathways to the doors are just covered in moss down here. And over here, it uh, needs a little bit of cleanup. So I'll do that next, clean up a bit of the moss. All right, I'm going to start with the tweezers, just pulling the moss out out of the pathway here. I think I left a little hedge each side of the pathway, so I'll keep that. I want these buildings to look like they're lived in, not that they're abandoned. Which might be a cool look too. You know, maybe eventually the ficus will overgrow the buildings, drop aerial roots, and the buildings will be lost in the jungle. But not now. Okay, so that looks a little better. Next, I'm going to clean up the pathway to the other house. Just get all this moss off the brickwork. I may have to get my toothbrush and kind of clean up the pathway a bit. It's a little, that's got a lot of algae growing on it. The algae and uh, moss looks nice on the pathway. It gives it a natural touch, but there's such a thing as having too much you want just a subtle amount so it looks realistic. Again, I'm not going for that abandoned house look. Again, not taking all the weathering off of it, just reducing it so it looks a little less abandoned. Looks a little more lived in. I think that looks good. I made really good progress on my Chinese village penjing today. There's lots more work to do on it, but that'll be coming in a future video. Tonight, I'm heading to the orchard to help out with the trees, pruning them, and putting mulch around all the trees. So I'll be busy with that. In the last few days, uh, we've had some really cold temperatures here. We went below freezing, and I had all my trees out on the bench, and I thought, well, should I leave them out or should I bring them all back into the greenhouse here? And I thought, I'm going to leave them out. The leaves are kind of getting close to hardening off. And I thought, they should be okay. I'll show you what the weather was like a couple of days ago. Here's an update on the weather. It's 9 in the morning right now. We got snow last night. Now, I left a lot of my trees outside. I'm hoping they can deal with the cold okay. So here's my small leaf linden. Looking very, very cold. My elephants look 
really, really cold. So here's the benches. So you can see I left the trees out in the cold. I'm hoping the leaves survive. I guess we'll find out. I mean, they look green at the moment. Oh, I got the snow on the pine here. That's cool. Let's check out the greenhouse, see how warm it is in here. Oh, it's a little warmer in here. Not real warm. It's 12 degrees Celsius or what's that in Fahrenheit? 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not too bad in here. We have one more cool day in the weather forecast today and tonight is cold below freezing. So I hope the trees, all the leaves on them do well. I hope they don't all, you know, get damaged and fall off. Usually they can survive like a, a cold like this where it goes below freezing. So time will tell. It is the next morning now. The cold weather continues. Last night we went down to two degrees below freezing. So I haven't checked on the trees yet. So I think it's time to do that. All right, let's check on the trees. Well, benches still look green. That's good. That's a good sign. The uh, small leaf linden, the leaves are hanging, definitely drooping, but they look okay so far. Hopefully they won't turn black in the next few days or anything strange like that. There's a native maple, looks fine. The willow looks good, the silver maples look good, the apple looks good. The larch looks awesome, yeah. Well, everything looks good. I'm actually quite surprised considering how cold it got and they're all out into leaf yeah let's check in on the poly house see how things are in here well it looks okay so I gave away one of my royal oak uh, baskets here pond baskets to Eric from the workshop, the uh, Tiger Bark Ficus workshop at Tropical Expression. So he was happy to get that. Uh, yeah, everything else is looking good. My um, European buckthorn, the large one, is coming out into leaf. Now I did notice up top that it's not very strong up top. There's, looks like some die back, but there is some leaves coming out on the apex here, which is really good. I was worried the whole top died off, but no, that's okay. So somewhere here will be the new front for it. Now, I thought about repotting it this year, but I, I'm going to wait. I filled up, the original um, pot was this size, so I filled up all with new soil on both ends of this planting, with new bonsai soil. And it's been in here, uh, this will be the year two in this pot. So I thought I better let it stabilize, fill those new, pockets of soil with roots and then the next year I'll rotate the tree around in the pot to the new front and I can do a bit of pruning this year for the first time uh, last year I did a lot of deadwood work uh, I did some rough pruning just to get some long whips off but no real styling until the tree had kind of stabilized in its new location so that will be coming I'm watering it really well feeding it well hoping I don't lose every branch on the tree and you know replaced by new branches it's these buckthorns are like that you can see there's one branch here that's dead I was hoping this part of it would be alive but it wasn't and you know there's some dieback there's some whips here that are dead but there's always you know a shoot growing this part looks like it's dead but then the shoot that went upright is growing yeah very well, I won't say unpredictable because maybe in the future they will it will be predictable. Maybe it'll settle down in its pot and with the regular watering and fertilizing, maybe the tree will become a predictable grower. So we will see. The eastern white cedars look good in the snow. 
in my thoughts on these trees, the leaves have been out long enough that I was hoping they had hardened off enough that they could take a light freeze. And I think so far it looks like they have. I mean, I've seen trees in nature, you know, fully leafed out and then we get a real cold spell on it. They totally freeze and they're fine. So I'm hoping the same with my bonsai, that I don't get any, you know, frostbite on them or anything like that. So this white stuff here, this snow, <laughs> should disappear soon today. And it's going to warm up a bit this week. Not real warm, but above freezing. And that's the way spring always is. It's never a gradual increase in temperature. It's always up, really warm one day, really cold the next day. And it's, it's, uh, it's hard to deal with because you know, this is repotting season right now. And you just repotted your trees. You've got them repotted and then it goes really, really cold. So a repotted tree should ideally stay above freezing and out of the wind. But uh, yeah, you do what you can. It certainly helps to have a polyhouse or a greenhouse or something. Keep them uh, slightly warm and out of the wind after repotting. But if they have to go on the benches, you know, they have to go on the benches and you just experience those ups and downs of temperature and hope the tree does well. Now the weather has warmed up. It's quite pleasant outside, more spring-like temperatures. I'll show you the trees. They didn't seem to get any damage at all. So I'll show you the trees now. Here are the trees now. So here's the Osage Orange Forest. It looks fine. No damage at all. The small leaf linden, the leaves are still hanging a bit, but they all look okay. There's no, you know, damage to the leaves. Well, maybe there is a little bit there, but not much. The tree has definitely survived. Now we are supposed to go down below freezing one more night, but that's not for a few days. So I'm sure if it survived the minus two, two degrees below freezing, it'll survive that minus one degree below freezing night also. My elephant penging here is not looking so good. Uh, it's kind of a bit yellowy. I'm a little worried about it. I don't think I was watering it enough in the greenhouse. Yeah, it's not looking real lush. Hopefully, you know, when the new growth comes in, it greens up, but I'm keeping my eyes on that. I'm keeping it well watered, taking good care of it. On the benches here, the red maple, I don't see any damage to the leaves at all from those cold temperatures and snow. Um, the silver maples, they also look fine, no damage to those. The willows look fine. The apple tree looks fine. I am getting a little bit of that blight on it. You can see the end of the leaves here. It's getting that kind of blight that I always get. Oh well. I'll have to just prune that off. Keep it growing. The larches, no damage on those. They're fine. All the other trees here. They all seem, oh, this one has a bit of damage on the leaf. This is the London Plains. Yeah, one leaf died off, but the bud's okay. So, you know, a little bit of minor damage. Ooh, here's one that got damaged. This is the Virginia Creeper. You can see all the leaves are curled up. It didn't like the cold. So maybe the next night I'll bring that in. I'm sure it hasn't hurt the tree. I can see new growth coming out on it already. There's one that got damaged. Uh, a little bit of damage to my red maples here. You can see there's a leaf that's still limp. The growing tips look good. Some minor damage on that one. My uh, black maple here, it's still a little droopy looking. So maybe, you know, a little bit of damage to those. I'm sure they'll perk up again or be replaced by new leaves eventually. The cedars, there's, they're fine. Um, the oak. The oak, uh, I think there's an insect in here. Yeah, there's a grub in there. See the caterpillar? Nasty little thing. Right in there. You're gonna have to go out. You're coming out of there. 
There, I got them. See it? All right, let's uh, let's put them. I can't kill them. I'll just put them over here on the hedge. Maybe he'll find something else he likes to eat. Just toss them over here. Bye bye, caterpillar. Anyway, back to the oaks here. Other than that caterpillar, they all look okay. I see the leaves have been eaten a bit by that caterpillar, but I'm sure that'll recover. The mulberry looks fine here. The field maple looks fine. Uh, my blue ash looks really good. Now this one I did bring into the greenhouse in the cold weather. I didn't want to risk it because it's such a rare tree. It's growing really, really well though. All these natives are. This forest is looking good. No damage to that. Over here, I've got my wild thing, Cascade Cedar. It looks fine. My Norway maple, it's uh, got incredibly large leaves, as I said. I don't see any damage to that at all. It all looks fine. The red maple here, it looks good. I don't see any damage at all on that one. The um, buckthorn here, the European buckthorn, I had aphids on it. And... I, uh, it was in the greenhouse and had aphids all over the tips. So I brought it outside and sprayed it with soap and water. And that seems to have killed off all the aphids, but I can see there is some damage at the tips, and I don't know if that's from the cold or the aphids. I think it's from the aphids. Yeah, you can see the dead ones on the branches there. Yeah, so they didn't like the soap and water, those aphids. So that is the update. Everything survived the cold weather so far. A few minor problems, but nothing too bad. After today, I'll have 21 days before the Toronto Bonsai Society Spring Show and Sale. So I've got lots of work to do, lots of trees to try and get ready for the show. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>